Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon coming at you today with another pro revenge story. Management tries to fire me, I turn the tables. Let's jump right in. I had a manager try and fire me for being rude to a caller. The caller wanted us to call internationally to confirm insurance. I asked the current floor supervisor if we could, and he said no, so I told the caller we couldn't. She ended the call, and I went to ask the supervisor if there was anything we could do, and was told we could not. I asked him to email that answer to me, and he did. I got called in, and was told that I was unprofessional on the phones, and that I was not following correct procedures, and that I was being investigated with consideration that I would be fired. My supervisor had no spine, so was in agreement that I needed to be fired. I was told we do not ever tell a member no and that she had spoken with the supervisor who told me to say no and he denied it and claimed I never asked him. Luckily, I had three years of weekly emails I saved and printed out that showed me every Thursday asking my supervisor if I was doing okay on the phones, how I could improve, and if there were any classes I could take to improve my skill and knowledge. Every reply was praised with how well I was doing, how I was being considered as or doing well as a trainer. I became one after a year, and had reviews of my work attached. Every single QA review gave me 100% scores, and I was the only one on the whole team who consistently got 100% reviews. I also had a large file full of customer compliments where they asked to speak with a supervisor to praise my work and then I am given a certificate. I also included the email from the supervisor who instructed me to say no. I quietly put this all together in an inch thick file and made three copies. I was called back to discuss my reprehensible behavior and to review calls I had made as evidence of my bad service. As we listened, the manager pointed out how cold and emotionless I sounded. I agreed that it could have been taken this way if one were to look for a problem, but my phone voice is always calm and careful so that I am easily understood. I have been told how much it is appreciated by our callers since we mostly deal with the elderly and doctor's offices and they appreciated that my information was clearly presented since misunderstandings can be very bad. I had customer compliments that often included appreciation for the way I spoke. Three out of five of the calls we reviewed, she said were the worst interactions she had ever heard. I said that was odd, since I had a certificate for all three calls, signed by my supervisor and her, and certificates weren't given out until the call was listened to. The other two problematic calls were ones where I had received a 100% score by the QA department. So I asked, well, my supervisor is telling me weekly that I'm doing the best on the team, the QA department is telling me I'm always meeting 100% of my goals, and the customers are giving me positive reviews. So, if my attitude has been such a problem for so long, why wasn't it addressed before? No answer. I demanded to know why this issue was allowed to continue for so long. The manager asked me to return to my desk, but asked that I leave my folder of evidence for review, which I did. I went to lunch, and when I returned, I was told there was a computer error that wiped my email profile and all saved emails from my email account, and my computer had been reformatted to fix the error. I asked the supervisor about it, and she said she needed to talk to manager. I was called in again and told that without any evidence to back up my claims of 100% QA scores and my customer appreciation certificates, they had no choice but to move forward. I asked where my printed copy went to and manager claimed she didn't have it and that I had never given her a copy. So I pulled out another copy of all the paperwork and explained that deleting it off my computer didn't delete my copies, nor the copies she had no access to on the company cloud, which is where I backed up my information daily. Something that was so uncommon, the supervisor didn't even know it was something we could do. 
I then asked for an HR representative, and manager said I waived my right to having an HR rep present when I didn't ask for one at the start of this mess. I said the matter should be put to rest, and manager said she was the one who decided this, as she was the one in charge. She also handed me a write-up and demanded I sign it. I took the time to read it, and of course, it had me admitting that I was 100% at fault, and that I would not retaliate in the slightest regardless of action. It wasn't even on the company's disciplinary form, it was written in word. I was done. I decided to just go with the nuclear option. Instead of quietly trying to talk to HR, I went far above their heads. I grabbed the write-up and walked out. Manager went to stop me until she saw me walk into the office of the director of all the call centers in the company, a guy who was magnitudes above her and who I was on friendly terms with. He asked what was up, and I told him that manager was in the process of trying to fire me. I gave him the write-up and my folder of evidence, and he went from friendly disinterest to dead serious. 30 minutes later, he finished reviewing everything and said, follow me. We returned to the manager's office, and she turned white when director told manager to call in supervisor and HR. He kept asking her what she was trying to do, why she was going after me, and why she felt it was okay to try and delete evidence from my computer. He never yelled. He would ask her a question and then patiently wait for an answer, which she couldn't give. Whenever she would bring me up or look at me, director would say something like, no, don't look at him, you and I are talking right now. When supervisor arrived, he did the same to her. No answers, just stammering and half excuses. HR arrived, and manager jumped to speak over me to give her side. Supervisor did the same once manager was done. They were clearly trying to run out the clock since HR was a small department and had blocked out time for meetings. I finally mentioned this, and the HR person said that they had cancelled all other meetings today, and she would be there as long as it took to get to the bottom of the issue. Manager looked enraged. Supervisor looked pale and terrified. I was then taken to a separate office to give my side. Manager said she had the right to be there, and the director told her and supervisor that they had the right to sit there and wait. Both were told they were not to leave until he told them they could, because both were known to disappear and go home if any problems happened on the floor. HR, director, and I had a nice chat. We went over my evidence and call history, listened to the call that started the whole landslide, and then asked if there was anything I think I could have done better. I said, I could have asked a different supervisor for help. I used the HR person's laptop to pull up my stuff I had saved on the cloud, and there it was. Document after document, proving my side, emails from supervisor, emails from manager all praising me, proof of my 100% QAs, everything. Director was almost gleeful that he finally had something concrete because there had been complaints about the manager and supervisor, but those complaining never did anything. He called the QA manager in and got a statement about my QA scores and how I was professional 100% of the time, and pulled in supervisors from other teams who confirmed I was a pleasure to work with and always went above and beyond to help. It felt pretty good to know I was actually appreciated by people who matter. You don't get that often in a call center environment. They agreed I had done nothing wrong and asked that as far as they were concerned, the matter was closed for me, but they would be looking into manager and supervisor. They couldn't tell me anything officially, of course. Manager and supervisor got official disciplinary actions with threat to terminate if they were caught doing this again, ever. The supervisor was demoted and transferred out of the department completely. I heard that it basically ruined her career with the company since the actions were so serious. Manager ended up moving to a different office at lower pay and about 40 minutes further from her home because her actions against me opened the floodgates against her and she could be fired or take the far worse position. She ended up quitting after about a month.
Why did supervisor and manager decide they hated me? I don't know exactly what caused it, but apparently they had problems with me for a couple years and would talk to other employees behind my back about what a lazy and bad employee I was. Of course, some people agreed, that's the nature of the beast, but it was rewarding to know that most of them disagree. Keep your paper trail, folks, and be friendly with upper management. Call center work takes a certain kind of person. I did it for quite a few years myself and it was just soul crushing. OP stated in a comment down below the story that it might have been the supervisor and manager's position that OP was doing really well and their jobs were in danger because of how well OP was doing. However misguided that may have been, they really didn't have the right to take it out on OP like that. I'm glad OP took it to the higher up, to the director, and got the issue dealt with. I want to thank OP for posting this story to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.